people welcome back to the blind girl experience my name is Eve Kibar um, I lost my sight in November 2020 and now I'm living through a journey um, as a blind girl so yes welcome here this is where we talk about visual impairedness and all sorts of things mini uh, all sorts of things blind so I have my shy friend Chloe, she'll be asking me questions <laughs> about my goals before and now after. And let's entertain. Chloe, introduce yourself, then we can start. <laughs> hey everyone, so as you already know, my name is Chloe and how this is going to work is I went through the internet and got a list of 12 things that appear in most people's bucket list. So I'll ask them to Eve and she will respond if she would do it um, now or even previously before she transitioned to losing her sight. So she'll just give us from different perspectives so we can see like where she stands and hopefully we can have some fun. <laughs> I hope you didn't put things that I can do so that I don't say no to everything. <laughs> okay, so the first thing is travel the world. Oh yes, I still want to travel the world. I think right now it will be more authentic because I get to experience different countries instead of just seeing things um, probably you know when you go to a place you want to see you want to see the Statue of Liberty you want to see the the, the Eiffel Tower you want to see the things different things in different countries but now I want to experience and experiencing gives a whole different aspect because I want to experience the food the language, the places, the bonding, you know, the different lifestyle people are partaking, the conversations. I think that's more um, memorable than just seeing things because I remember my, my, my trip to Cairo was more of an experience than sight. I didn't get to see the pyramids. I didn't, at that time I was really, really unwell. But then I got to experience Cairo because I got friends who are from Cairo and they took me laps. And you get to experience Cairo from a very indigenous way. Like you get to experience it from a Cairo person perspective, not a tourist <laughs> going for shopping, going to a restaurant and eating their food like just any Kawa person. You're not going there as... I'm a tourist. I come from Kenya. No. <laughs> so yes, I still want to travel the world. Okay. Um, what about learn a new language? I want to learn. I'm not learning. I think it's relearning more than learning French because I did French in high school. <laughs> it was so basic. Okay. It was, it was, it was intense, honestly. And it was a lot of grammar and my French teacher will be sometimes used to just look at me and wonder why, why is the student still here? But I will just say, Madame Geke, thank you for teaching me French. You did a good job. It's just that somehow the grandma missed my very uh, bright part of, part of my brain. But I'd, I'd want to relearn French so that for conversational purposes, so that when you travel, because uh, Africa is like divided into three languages mostly it's uh, English French Arabic so I'd want to do French because of traveling in Africa and also having conversations with African people because at the end of the day I'd want this channel to grow to an African level where I represent not just myself in Kenya but also other blind people in other parts of Africa and that with that I may have to learn yeah, French and somehow probably learn Arabic. <laughs> I do not know how, but it's a difficult language in terms of writing it, but I would want to learn it because it's somehow, there's some words that match up to Kiswahili. So it's not that 
I don't think it's that bad. Yeah, for conversational purposes. And Spanish, I'd want to learn Spanish. And then I think when you learn Spanish, Portuguese becomes a bit easier. <laughs> so yeah, that's, I think, about it. I've not thought of German because I find German so... Nah. <laughs> Okay, so um, try a profession in a different field. Like, how have your views changed in that regard before and after, and which field if you were thinking about it? Okay, so when I lost my sight, I was pretty bummed by it, and I'm thinking, wow, so now what am I supposed to do with my life? And I, I Formerly as a film producer, and then also I had ventured into entrepreneurship by running my own online store. It was a lingerie store. That was really cool. I still think it's cool. But then all those those two things, I'm still I'm not able to do them as per now because of my visual impairment. But then I thought of doing teaching. But then. When I thought of teaching, I wanted to do it from a social level and not an educational level. Like if I'm teaching history, I'm teaching history for the love of history, for, for kids to understand history from a very um, general knowledge point of view and not from ex for the exam, you know, tests kind of thing. It's for them to enjoy history, for them to learn history and they can relate to what is happening right now in the world so i would probably pick teaching but i do not i don't think i have the patience <laughs> for small kids but i would learn i think i would want to do teaching but not from an educational perspective but more from um exact i mean social more of just general knowledge impacting knowledge and yeah for them to understand and enjoy uh, learning new things, yeah. So I'd probably teach English and maybe history, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is a long shot, but would you run a marathon? <laughs> I think I quit running in high school. I only did relays, so marathon is a bit uh, you're overstretching my muscles. Uh, I'm not a fan of running. I used to jog uh, back when I was sighted, but even that would always plummet very fast. After like a month, I'm like, nah, I don't think I can do this. So marathon is pushing it, but I don't know. I think I would do other exercises than jogging or running a marathon if it's, it, if it's in terms of keeping fit. Yeah. On that note, would you take up a new sport? Hmm, sport. It's been a very interesting topic in my head, but I haven't come to us. I've not gotten to a sport where in which I would really do so well as a blind person because I was not very sportive. I was more into theater, arts, drama, film production. So sport is like, okay, so now what do I do? Because even board games is hard. They're also visual oriented. So now I'm thinking, so what am I supposed to do with this? But if I find and if anyone has any comments on spots that I should try, oh, please share them with me on the comment section <laughs> and tell me what you think I should try in the sporting uh, sector. Because honestly, I have I don't think I have any clue, but I would try probably. Yeah, why not? Okay, and an extreme, extreme long shot. Would you climb a mountain? <laughs> no, no, I'm a lazy person. I cannot even climb. Like I couldn't go past the third hill on Gong Hills. And then you are expecting me to go to climb a mountain. Nah. Uh, what I think I would want to try is rock climbing. Not rock climbing, like rocks it's yeah the one at blue sky at diamond plaza that one would be fun because it's it's a fun activity it's yes i'll fail and do it and fail and do it but it's not climbing a rock i will fall down to mattresses and it's fun like that climbing a whole rock and then 
then I'm blind. No, no. But yeah, no climbing mountains. We'll try the Diamond Plaza one if they allow. <laughs> okay, so shifting gears, um, would you connect with a past teacher? One of the teachers you've had before and if you can send them a shout out, why not? Oh yeah, um, my favorite teacher in primary school and for some very weird reason, I still remember her. She was a big deal to the point that I caused chaos when I was changed, removed from her class. Um, she was called Teacher Sally Sang. I even followed her daughter on Facebook. I mean, we became added her daughter as a friend on Facebook. So teacher Sally Sang was precious to me as a child. And I think I would want to reconnect with her, you know, have coffee, <laughs> a meal and find out what she's doing right now. I think she would be one of the reasons I still would want to like do teaching because she made learning very interesting through songs and you know counting i remember things in cre because of the songs she made us sing to remember things like the books of the bible and also uh the the the, the 12 disciples of jesus like there sometimes i'm able to help my niece with homework because of the songs she taught me back in the day so yeah i'd want to reconnect with teacher sally and also I'd want to connect with my Swahili teacher in high school. She was called Biki Linda because I thought she was an amazing, amazing soul. And despite the things I think she's gone through the most, she lost five of her children in a span of, I think, six years. And not because of her tragedy, but because of the kind of person she was to me in high school. She was strict and I loved her Swahili because she's Tanzanian and she was just cool she was real she would say things as they were she wouldn't mince her words and at the same time she was also very motherly you know she would always have an extra ear for you even past lessons like if you have a problem with something that is aside from Kiswahili she would still have time for you she had time for me that is and I really, really liked her. So I'd want to reconnect with her as well. I hope she's okay wherever she is. Shout out to Vicky Linda and Teacher Sally. <laughs> um, would you do volunteer work? And what, what do you have in mind? And has it changed over the past year or so? Mm, yes, volunteer work. I, I used to think about it. And then I'm like, okay, I don't want to do things because people are doing it. I don't want to visit a children's home because people are doing a children's home. I want to connect with people that I would want to still connect with them for. You know, because going to a children's home once and then leaving and going back home, you haven't changed much. You've just done a visit. But I wanted to do something that I can still keep doing and doing and doing. And I guess... God just dumped it on my laps and said, well, here it's something. So now I'm hoping to build some a program in which you can cater for blind people in a way that you can still socialize with sighted people. Because whenever I ask someone like Chloe, do you know any blind person before me, like close to you, like a friend, friend or a family member? Oh, no. <laughs> No. Roy, do you know any blind person? No. Yeah, so most people don't know a blind person until I came along and they're like, oh yeah. So, oh yeah, she's blind, but I don't know what to do. So I'm thinking of creating like a program where people can just volunteer to come and just chat and meet up and work with people who've lost their sight because... There are people who lose their sight and they lose family, they lose friends, and they become destitute. They don't know where else to go. So you find them on the streets. It's not because they're lazy. It's not because they don't think, they don't want to work hard. It's because they have nowhere else to go. And the people who are their world at that time when they were sighted have run away from them. Some people are born blind and their parents do not want them. So therefore they are left to the world to take care of them. So if 
I can create a program where even if it's someone can be able to relate to blind people and be and include them in parties and conversations and even you know or even the way like going to a mall is so hard right now because if I'm left to my own device like I'm left alone I can't navigate through them all because we'll get me through from one place to another you know but all this is because it's not because people do not like us or do not like blind people it's because they've never really had to um what do you, they've not had to converse or associate with them from a very close level so therefore they are just let's say ignorant by default therefore they don't know what to do um so if i can create a program where we are all volunteering to just come through and have like fun like a fun day where we do activities that can include both sighted and blind people to to perform in the same activity and get to talk to each other so that blind people stop feeling like they've been left on their own all the time because losing sight is a big deal it 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 literally paralyzes you from working on your own it's not very easy especially in our country it's not because Uh, most people just don't know what to do with you but i think the more we are able to have activities together inclusive activities we'll be able to know what to do with our friends who lose their sight along the way or people who are born blind or kids or parents who are having deaf kids you know you are able to learn how to include them in your activities and your social gatherings yeah that's something i i'm thinking of doing hopefully if i get enough financial <laughs> funding and yeah the right people on board that would be amazing that's actually a pretty cool idea so on a similar note um would you mentor someone hmm mentor i don't i don't know because mentor is such a a lot of responsibility and i don't think i've hacked this blind side of life yet i'm still like I'm an amateur and i still need to get to my 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 like i need to get to my place where i'm okay with this completely i still need to be able how to live with this in a way that i do not feel like there's any other way to live life I might not say I'm not saying I've not accepted my blindness it's just that I still don't know how to navigate some things in my life once I at least know that once at least I have a grasp of this is it for it is it for the rest of my life but it's like fully grasping both physically mentally psychologically I might be able to mentor someone but for now not not really. I think I'm still figuring this out. Sure, that's great. That's pretty understandable. So we shift gears again. Um so is there start a business? Do you, have you always wanted to start a business? Has that changed? I started a business, Eden Lingerie. It was going it was hard it was like oh my god it was really really hard starting it and finding a flow and then covid happened and things started looking up and i'm like oh my god amidst all the odds it's starting to make sense now then before i know it i was blind so it's become hard to run the business now it's been on stall like uh, it stalled immediately i lost i i became sick i went to hospital I've not run that business for a year and months right now. It's almost a year and a half or it is a year and a half. Um but if I'm to start a business, I think I would do something with relation to um something that I'm doing like visual impairments. I don't know. I'm not sure. But this YouTube channel could be my business. because at the end of the day I want to earn a living. I I'm stuck at the point I do not even know if I want to work, go back to working because I don't know who will employ me as a blind person and what am I able to do? And for now I just want to do I think I want to work in spaces that are con- are comfortable for me like this YouTube channel and maybe a podcast 
those could be businesses eventually because they will get me food on the table and I'll get me my independence yeah but I think that would be my side my kind of business I don't know if they're called it's called social entrepreneurship or what is it <laughs> yeah. yes something like that like working towards uh, creating awareness because most before we were used to so certain careers but now being a content creator is a business it's actually a job it's a career so i'd want to grow in this as a new thing for me okay good stuff so the final one this is the one that has come up in all bucket lists so it'd be really cool if you could give a before and after perspective so this is pursuing your passion or purpose hmm uh i had this inclination or I wanted to write a book. I kept saying that before I die, I want to write a book. But I didn't know what to write. the book will be about. I still do not know what that book will be about, but I still want to pursue it. In fact, I think when I was losing my sight, I was like, oh man, so now how am I going to write a book? Like, how will I be able to type this all out? And man, typing is not easy when you're blind. I, I will not even lie to you. It, it needs a lot of practice endurance i don't know perseverance all those things so yeah i would want to pursue writing a book it would be a passion because i love writing and i love storytelling so yeah that would be something uh before i had no i felt like i had no purpose i was just parambulating and existing in this world i was doing something in business and but i still felt like i hadn't wasn't hadn't knocked it yet like what exactly do i want to do what is this that will make me feel like i'm fulfilling my life's purpose and ever since losing my sight i've started thinking differently towards what i what i am you know because yes i'm blind and i'm realizing that there's so much to do on the side of life there's so much we are lacking as people who are visually impaired there are so many systems that are not working for us not just even for visual impaired people even for people who are with different disabilities it the system is so it's like it does it just looks away from you and i feel like that would be my next uh purpose something that i'd want to pursue and just create awareness really not at it going all ham it's just creating awareness by telling people my story and other people's stories who are through uh, people who have been affected by one disability or another so yeah i think that would be my purpose or something i'd want to pursue now in my future <laughs> so thanks guys for joining me uh, please comment on things you have changed uh, maybe your perception and the things that you had before uh, you had this and maybe after you had this and things you would uh, suggest that would be friendly for a visually impaired person to, to pursue it would be interesting to learn from you guys so yeah, thank you for joining my show. I hope to be here next time to entertain, inform and create awareness. So stay tuned and bye.